Tokyo, a city that needs very little introduction. Japan's capital, a mega metropolis where the ancient and futuristic coexist. It's easy to have your lost in translation moment here, but what if you want to get lost in football? Despite being a city of over 9 million people, there are only three J League clubs here. All three clubs though, have interesting stories to tell, from historic titles to agonizing near misses, those with bright futures and others with uncertain times ahead. And that's not to mention the fascinating and ambitious clubs striving for a future in the J-League. This is Football Destinations Japan, Tokyo. Let's talk about gas. Can you spell gas? In particular, Tokyo Gas, the company that provides natural gas to various cities in the Kanto region and beyond. The company whose mascot is Pachokan, a flatulent bear with a shapely behind. Because this company is the origin of the team that is currently the best performing in the capital, FC Tokyo. All the way back in 1935, Tokyo Gas Soccer Club were formed by the company of the same name. But for the first 56 years of their life as a football club, not a lot happened. The club spent most of its time bouncing around between the local Tokyo and regional Kanto leagues. It wasn't until the early 1990s that the club started to make progress. In 1991, they joined the Japan Soccer League, which was the precursor to the J League. And in 1992, they entered the Japan Football League, one step below the J League. As a JFL team, the club gradually improved, with 1998 becoming a huge season for the club and football in Tokyo. In this year, a major restructuring of the club occurred. A total of 161 organisations, including Tokyo Gas, Tokyo Electric and TV Tokyo, invested to form the Tokyo Football Club Group. In the same year, the club won the JFL and were granted entry to the J-League for the 1999 season, where they would compete as FC Tokyo under the umbrella of the new Tokyo Football Club group. And life in the J-League started pretty well for the club under its shiny new name. FC Tokyo finished second and won promotion to J1 for the 2000 season. The club took another huge step in 2001, moving into the 49,000 seat Tokyo Stadium currently known as Ajinomoto Stadium. At the same time, Tokyo Verdi also moved into the stadium and the two clubs still share the ground today. More on Tokyo Verdi later. FC Tokyo achieved another milestone in 2004, picking up their first piece of major silverware. In the Levan Cup final, FC Tokyo beat Urawa Reds 4-2 on penalties at the National Stadium. Another Levan Cup followed in 2009, this time with a 2-0 win over Kawasaki Frontale. But a shock setback was about to follow. In 2010, FC Tokyo finished 16th and were relegated to J2. A club that had been on a constant rise suddenly found themselves heading back to the second tier. But they responded in style. FC Tokyo bounced back at the first attempt as J2 champions and completed an unlikely double by also winning that season's Emperor's Cup with a 4-2 win over Kyoto Sanga. Winning the Emperor's Cup sent FC Tokyo into the Asian Champions League for the first time in 2012, in a campaign where they reached the last 16. They would go on to equal that performance in 2016 and 2020. FC Tokyo won another Levan Cup in 2020, but a J1 title remains elusive. To date, their best performance in J1 was a second place finish in 2019, losing out on the title to Yokohama F Marinos after a season-long battle. But one club in the capital that do have J-League titles to their name are Tokyo Verdi. They made history by winning the first two editions of the J-League and emerged as one of the first big teams in the professional era of Japanese football. But despite this incredible start, recent life in the J-League has been one of turmoil, disappointment and worry. To tell the story of Tokyo Verdi, we have to go back to 1968 and the Mexico City Olympics, where Japan had just won bronze in the football competition. 
This was a major achievement for Japan, who up to this point had tasted very little success on the international stage and had not yet qualified for a World Cup. Baseball is the most popular sport in Japan. It is today, and it undoubtedly was in the 1960s. So what better way to try and build on the newfound love for football than by using a baseball team to leverage support, and not just any baseball team, but the baseball team in Japan. Yomiuri Giants have long been a favourite of baseball fans all across Japan, despite the team being located in Tokyo. And after the Olympic success, Japan Football Association president Ken Nozu approached Giants chairman Matsutaro Shoriki to sound him out about forming a new football team. Nozu was clearly persuasive, because in 1969, Yomiuri Soccer Club was founded, backed by the Yomiuri Group and Nippon Tadebi. The club made their debut in the local Tokyo leagues, and quickly progressed, reaching the Japan Soccer League Division 2 in 1972. And by 1978, they were in the top division, where they went on to enjoy considerable success. Yomiuri won five JSL Division 1 titles, a number only matched by Mazda SCE, now known as Sanfrecce Hiroshima. In addition, Yomiuri won three JSL Cups and three Emperor's Cups. Yomiuri won the final two editions of the JSL, setting them up perfectly to hit the ground running in the J-League. But joining the new world of Japanese professional football meant some changes. An important J-League rule is that every club must be associated with a hometown, with corporate teams not permitted. So Yomiuri SC was no more. The club entered the new era as Verdi Kawasaki, leaving Tokyo to play at Todoroki Athletic Stadium in Kawasaki City, Kanagawa Prefecture. As well as winning the first two editions of the J-League, Verdi Kawasaki won the first three J-League Cups and added another Emperor's Cup in 1996. But the good times weren't to last. Verdi began to fall down the order and attendances dropped sharply. Football in Kanagawa is a competitive affair and at the time Verdi were competing with Yokohama Marinos, Yokohama Flugels, Belmare Hiratsuka and the up-and-coming Kawasaki Frontale. So in 2001, the club left Kawasaki behind and returned to the capital, becoming Tokyo Verdi. The club moved into Ajinomoto Stadium, sharing it with FC Tokyo. Despite an initial bump in attendances, it wasn't to last, with FC Tokyo now the more established team in the capital. And things were about to get even worse for Verdi. Another Empress Cup win in 2004 didn't herald a return to the big time. Instead, it preceded a relegation as Verdi dropped down to J2 for the first time in their history. The club returned to J1 in 2008, but only for one season, and since 2009 have been a mainstay in the second tier. The club's glory days as part of the big spending Yomiuri group are long gone. Moving from Tokyo to Kawasaki, and then back to Tokyo again, meant the club failed to become a strong part of any community. Financial issues have also plagued the club over the last few years, with Verdi running a crowdfunding campaign in 2020 to raise 30 million yen. At the time of making this video, Verdi are going through a messy ownership change, with sporting goods firm Zebio launching a hostile takeover. It's undoubtedly sad to see a team with so much history as Verdi struggling as they are. We can only hope that this club can once more find their place in Japanese football and rediscover some of the magic from their past. But wait, not all things Verdi are mired in gloom. There is a bright side. Nitere Baletsa. In 1981, the Yomiuri group formed a women's team named Yomiuri SC Ladies Baletsa. The club became a founding member of the L League, the top women's football league in Japan, in 1989. And to this day, Baletsa remained the only women's club to have never been relegated from the top flight. Today, the L League is known as the Nadeshko League, and Beletsa are the undisputed most successful team. Since 1989, they've won an incredible 17 league titles, 14 Empress's Cups, 7 Nadeshko League Cups, and the inaugural AFC Women's Club Championship. And the club will become one of the founding members of the Wii League when it launches in autumn 2021. The Wii League will be Japan's first professional women's football league, and Beletsa will surely be one of the teams to beat. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Seven miles away down the road from Ajinomoto Stadium is a club that is often overlooked as being from the capital, but FC Machida Zelvia are from Tokyo, just about. Machida is located to the west of Tokyo, next to the border with Kanagawa Prefecture. Machida Zelvia are well integrated into the community of this small city, giving the club a strong identity and loyal fan base. The origins of Machida Zelvia go back to 1977 and the FC Machida Training Center, a club that trained elementary school students. From this club came FC Machida Top in 1989, which started out in the local Tokyo leagues. The club developed and moved steadily up the ranks. In 2009, Zelvia entered the Japan Football League and after three seasons were admitted to the J-League. However, their initial J-League campaign lasted just one season, with the team finishing bottom in J2 and returning to the JFL. But in 2014, they returned as one of the founding members of J3, the third tier of Japanese football. This time, the club were much better suited to the J-League, and after a second place finish in 2015, they were promoted to J2. In 2018, the club enjoyed their most successful season to date, finishing fourth in J2. However, at that time, the club did not possess a J1 license, so were not able to enter the playoffs. But the club doesn't lack ambition. At the time of making this video, development work is ongoing at Machida Gion Stadium to bring it up to J1 standards, with the club now possessing the required license for promotion to the top flight. Below the J-League, the football scene in Tokyo is fascinating, with a number of ambitious teams aiming big. Until recently, it looked like Tokyo Musashinal City would be the capital's next J-League team. But in 2020, the JFL club withdrew their J-League application, citing financial reasons. And then, in early 2021, the club announced they were merging with Tokyo United of the Kanto Soccer League to form Tokyo Musashino United. The club will compete in the JFL, the division below the J-League, in 2021, while Tokyo United will continue to run an amateur team in the regional Kanto Soccer League. To get on the road to joining the J-League, Clubs need to attain 100-year plan status, which involves meeting criteria such as being financially viable, having a functioning youth system, and being located in a designated hometown. And currently, only one club in Tokyo has their 100-year plan status approved, and it's one with a recognisable name to many, Nankatsu Essi. That's right, Nankatsu Essi from the popular manga Captain Tsubasa. But not quite. This Nankatsu SC don't play in Shizuoka. They are located in Tokyo's Katsushika Ward, but they do have a link to the famous manga. Captain Tsubasa's creator, Yoichi Takahashi, was appointed as chairman of the club's supporters association in 2013. Prior to this, the club were known as Katsushika Fitomado, but with Takahashi on board, they became Nankatsu SC. In 2019, while playing in the Tokyo Soccer League Division 1, Nankatsu SC achieved J-League 100-year plan status. In 2021, they will play in the Kanto Soccer League Division 2, the sixth tier of Japanese football, as they continue their rise towards the professional leagues. Another Tokyo team casting admiring glances towards the J-League are Kurirson Shinjuku. Those familiar with Tokyo will recognise Shinjuku as the place with the world's busiest train station, towering skyscrapers, huge department stores, and salaryman packed izakayas, but it's also home to one of the capital's most ambitious non league clubs. Kuriazon Shinjuku were formed in 2005 and will play in the Kanto Soccer League Division 1 in 2021. They have also submitted an application for J League 100 year plan status. Despite the club having Shinjuku as their designated hometown, they unfortunately don't play in a stadium surrounded by high rise buildings. They play at different stadiums around Tokyo, including AGF Field next to Ajinomoto Stadium. Kuriasan will be playing in the fifth tier of Japanese football in 2021, so are theoretically only two promotions from the J-League. Definitely one to watch. And it's not only Shinjuku that has J-League dreams. Just next door, there's another club with big ambitions. Shibuya City FC hail from the tourist hotspot where thousands of people cross the road. Until recently, this club was known as Tokyo City FC, but a very stylish rebrand in late 2020 has turned this into a club to watch. 
They boast some really cool shirts and are certainly not lacking in ambition. In 2021, they will play in Tokyo Soccer League Division 1, but according to their website, they aren't planning to hang about. In four years, they aim to be in J3, and in six years, they want to be a J1 team. That's a promotion every season from 2021 to 2026. Let's see if they can do it. Another Tokyo club to look out for is Tokyo 23 FC, who play in the Kanto Soccer League Division 1. Tokyo 23 are not to be confused with FC Tokyo under 23s, who previously played in J3. Tokyo 23 were formed in 2003, with the 23 in their name referring to the 23 wards that make up Tokyo City. Their objective is to be a team for all of Tokyo, with their designated hometown all 23 wards of the city. Their emblem shows an Icho leaf from the official tree of Tokyo. It also features 23 stars representing the wards of the city, and there's also a silhouette of the Tokyo Tower, one of the capital's most famous landmarks. The club currently play their home games at Edogawa Athletic Stadium in the east of the capital, and Tokyo 23 have also expressed a desire to one day play in the J-League, and their broad approach and evident pride in the city could appeal to a wide demographic across the capital. Tokyo is also home to some other important sites of Japanese football. There's the new national stadium that officially opened on January 1st, 2020, for the Emperor's Cup final between Vissel Kobe and Kashima Antlers. It replaced the original stadium on the same site, which opened in 1958 and closed in 2014. You can also find the Japan Football Museum in Tokyo, which has fascinating exhibits documenting the history of the game in Japan. You can see a replica of the Women's World Cup trophy won by Japan in 2011, plus memorabilia from the JSL and early days of the J-League. So that was Football Destinations Japan, Tokyo. Thank you for watching, and let me know which team from the capital is your favourite. This was episode 1 of the series, so let me know which part of Japan you would like to see covered next. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing for more videos about Japanese football. Thank you for watching.